Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode, we're going to be talking about our top three hard pike fishing lures. So uh, the first one we're going to talk about is one that I've actually been using over the past, well, year and a half really, is the Action Pike from uh, Fish Action. Bit of a beast of a lure. Uh, I'll just show you it there. It's sectioned. It's got that S-like swimming action, which I can do here for you right now uh, because it's a jointed lure. Big 3.0 trebles on there. It's about quite a big lure, it's about 122 grams, I believe. Uh, and you can actually change the fins, which is quite cool. You can slide the fins out. I think you could do it on the tail fin there. You can slide the oh, fin yeah. out, and then you can put in a different colored fin if you wish to, which I think is a real good idea, good addition to it. You can slide the other fins out as well on some of them. You know what I would do there? That, I didn't even know yeah. they did that. Yeah. I'd take this orange one off and put it on this. I put it on there to give it a right. strike zone. So it's like a hot red. What you put a hook in your finger, yeah. Yeah, yeah so there you go. do with Pollock and other predators. Yeah. And that'll stand out. So they've got the action here, and I reckon they'll bite the back of that lure more. Hey, yeah. look, it's just me saying You love that. having red and orange at the back, don't yeah. you? Yeah. So that's that's a really good, I think that's a really cool uh, addition. Loads of colours. That's called the Boogeyman, I think, that one. This is kind of your standard northern pike. Uh, I do really well, well, for our favourite colours for pike, really. Bright orange and green. Great lures. You've, yeah. uh, I've had good success in this. You've... Had a lot of hits, haven't you? I've had the hits on them because, look, I've got to be perfectly honest, I don't know whether to do them in a constant swimming action. My, Because I do a lot of twitch dead baits, when I do go privacy, I'm twitching and jerking, I like that flutter pause, flutter pause. So all lures, mostly, mostly for me, I twitch and jerk. I can't help it. Yeah. We went and did one uh, up with James on the River Thames looking yeah. for any predator on uh, creature baits, and he's saying, whatever move you do, move it slowly. Yeah, yeah. Move it slowly. And I just, you he wasn't running. looking, I had to have a few bumps like that, and I had yeah. pike swirl at it. So I like that, but you've, you, you know, you've well, got a reason I, why I'm missing. This goes really well at a constant retreat, it has that swimming action. And actually what you can do is if you uh, wind it and it swims, if you pause, it actually then starts to sink, it's got a moderate sink, and it acts as if it's a dying fish or an injured fish, and that can often enhance your take. I think the problem you've had, Dad, is not so much the lure, yeah. uh, you, your pike rods are quite soft, because yes. you're used to casting your sprats, which are what? Sure, small. Under 10 grams, if that, under yeah. 10 grams. So they're quite small. And you like using a soft rod because you like seeing the rod bend. Yep. But if you start using 120 gram lures on your rod, you've not got that power to then set the hook. And these are pretty big 3.0 trebles. Also, if you're using a longer rod, you've got all that give in the tip of the rod, again, which is taking up by this. You need that, almost a shorter rod is more yeah. powerful. And that's why those jerk And braid rods. as well, because then yeah, you're yeah. direct to it. Definitely, definitely some of the hits braid. Braid to get, a wire trace, yeah. Some of the hits I did get were sort of on the first few winds. It's like, yeah, they go quite they go, quick. Man, what's that? Yeah. And you have to bring them quite, so you're covering a lot of ground with them. Yeah. So that's that one. Good lure though, good lure. It looks good underwater. I yeah, mean, really good. You undoubtedly have been watching it while we've been talking, you've been watching the underwater action of these lures. Yeah. They are good, they can cover some water. I don't know, if can you put those leather, uh, leather? Leather? Those, those uh, what are those stick-on weight things, you know? The... Uh, you, you could do, yeah, yeah, you could do, but... There's you no probably vein on these. Yeah, you probably wouldn't need to, because they're 122 grams, they're fairly heavy as it is. Uh, but they do have a moderate sink, which means as you cast out, it's going to start st sinking yeah. straight away. Not a fast sink, so you don't have to really crank, but... Obviously you can do the countdown method, it's a moderate sink so you can get it to the right depth. But really good lure, I find as well, if you're struggling for a bite, it can actually, because they go, what the hell's that? It's quite a big lure, yeah, and then they go for it. So. And obviously they're all baby pike, that's what they look yeah, like. Yeah, they're all baby pike. Pike eat pike. Okay, when I was down in Somerset, about just over a year ago, I went to do a film on James Lemphere, who does handcrafted lures. There we go. Very, they and are there, amazing. We watched him. If you, it's on our playlist, isn't it, Mike? The, the it's lures. on the. It's, if you type in how to make a, a pike lure or something I'm like that, I'm going to call these. They're like a sort. To me, they look like a sort of stick bait, but yeah. a stick bait that you don't sort of walk the dog across the surface. Or that you could do with these if you hold the rod up high, is you know they're just immaculate. I mean, these are all hand painted. These fins in there. Yeah. You know, they're not mass produced. Intricate machine. design, isn't it? They are carved out of wood. They have an integral weight in here. They have a one piece wire body going right through, so it's not falling apart. But the action you get, I found, you can you can do this quite fast, and they, I'm going to say they want to go to sleep a bit. They're better if you can get that swinging motion on them. Yeah. Now, all you lure guys out there, there'd be a name for it. All I know is <laughs> walking the dog. It is walk the dog. Uh, yeah. But it's a swinging action that goes backwards and forwards and sweeps. And as it comes across on the side, I think there's a millisecond of a pause, and that's when we get the pike hits on them. Yeah. Now, I did go to that, that uh, another lake. There's a few rainbows and stuff in there. And I'll tell you what, like them, 
Rainbows. <laughs> Abs. Oh, man. It's that alive. size, isn't it? It's a good size. It's a bite size, yeah. It's if anything, that's going to get... If you're looking for a big pike, I'd say the action pike would go for the bigger pike. Although yeah. I've had yeah. jacks on those as well. Um, but I think if you're going for a numbers game and a great fun on, for jack pike on yeah. light tackle, this would be a queen. I'll tell you what, guys, these things... They would, they got the integral weight. My God, they <laughs> cast like a missile. They do, don't I don't they? know whether it's a shape that Jim's made it's in. quite or aerodynamic. What, you know, maybe with the weights under here, let's say about, about where the weight hook forward. is. Goes just like yes. a weight forward fly. So listen, the shape of that's tapered. Yeah. That must go through the air. And don't think you're tied up here. But I think with the slack line of the cast, this is the front end. I think it casts like a bullet. I was well impressed. I covered a lot of ground casting with these. Yeah. I'm very careful. I don't like to cast them anywhere near snags and stuff. So maybe I would be better fishing them near snags. But look, when you've got a beautiful lure like that, That's I mean, amazing. that is... The fact it's handmade as well. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to lose them. Really really but a good lure. That's one of our favourites as well. Yeah. So, Dad, I have to admit, I recognise these from when I was a kid going through raiding your tackle box. These must be 20 years old, 15 years they're old. They're more than that. They're 30. They're a Shakespeare big S. We're not selling them. It's just called a big S lure. It's big or an alpha. I think the standard for that shape is called an alphabet lure. And you can get loads of different ones in there. Now, this one's plastic. I think they might, be, they might have been sort of a different type of plastic. Then they seem heavier than the it modern ones. It does feel quite good quality, doesn't it? But these are the go-to when you're really struggling. Because the reason being, you can crank these fast... And they've got a throbbing action, just a yeah. constant throbbing action all the time. Brrr, sends out a lot of vibrations. And inside there... Rattle. Rattles as Even well. Even if I hold the hooks. This one is a modern one. It's hollow plastic. In there is, is, is a little rattle as well. So they definitely hear it because we filmed once or twice with the underwater camera. And you can hear the rattle of this lure. Yeah, going inside. amazing. You have to remember it. They can hear those rattles. I used to think, my God, that's what a gimmick that is by the tackle company just to sell it to us mugs. No, no, you can actually hear the rattle vibrating through the water with the underwater microphone. So that does work. That colour is a sort of rusty brown colour. Yes, I would one. say that's probably my best pike fishing lure. Well, was that the uh, previous one? The alphabet. Yeah, it's been sort of chewed. <laughs> Look at that. That's, the pre that's that colour. Paint of it, yeah. Which has been hammered. But, you know, you can, you can wind them at a constant rate. I find best. Tweak pulls, tweak pulls, yeah. and as you tweak, it makes it dive down as well, like it's trying to escape. So if you're, say, on a, say you're on a new water, this is how I would suggest it, if you're on a new water, you don't know where the fish are, you've got to do a lot of casting, you've got to cover that ground, then I will constant wind, you know, so you find out where you're going to get the hits. But if you know the area you're fishing, you know, a gravel pit, a lake, a river, and you know pretty well where the pike are holding up, then I get more fish by just slow tweaks, popping it, a little bit of fluttering, make it dive, and it's floating, so it goes right to the surface. And in the summer, that's in the winter, in the summer, you can crawl these across the surface like that and get explosive takes. So there you go, three different lures. So our best one, the last year we've had the best success on those lures. Yeah, we, there's really? plenty of other pike lures out there, don't yeah, get us wrong, but we're just going through three of our top ones, they're not, our, you know, absolute go-tos, but um, for you guys out there, you've got big, You've got the, what I call them, Jim's stick baits or whatever you want to call them. And you've got the alphabet oh, yes. plug shape as well. You can see the big balloon shape. And this one is very, very versatile on retrieves. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. Yep. Going to be some more lures coming on? Oh yeah, we've got loads more coming. I'll probably go through uh, some of my best drop shot lures that I've used for the past year or so. Um, and we've obviously got some more Predator videos coming up as well. Pike fishing, I will say guys, just a tip. Big hooks or small hooks, I'm going to be starting doing this more and more often. I figure sometimes it might come off because you, with the barb of the hook, you've got to pull that hook from there, from the point, all the way in, nearly half an inch, it's and lot, it's getting yeah. bigger all the time to get to pop it over the bar. It's a nightmare to get out if you get a pike in a landing net. Oh, <coughs> MG, yeah. it's a nightmare when they spin and roll up. I figure crush those barbs. If you lose the odd fish, I don't think it matters. I think if you're a beginner as well. And a beginner as well. Bombs. Look, if you're a beginner especially, it's easy to get the hook out as well. Yeah. But more important, you can set the hook, aren't you? Yeah. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our other YouTube channel, Totally Awesome Outdoors or TA Outdoors. It's growing at a monster rate. It's possibly going yeah. bigger than TA Fishing at it this is, rate. It is. Uh, and also, download our free digital bi-monthly magazine uh, called The Awesome Angler. There's links in the description. Free. Yeah, all free. We'll see you again. On the bank, the boat, the water somewhere.
really, really nice pike. Chuff for that. <laughs>